guys welcome back to the music segment in today's video i'm gonna be naming the top 10 goats of rap so let's get started at number 10 i put kendrick lamar there's so many other people that i would have wanted to put at number 10 but i put kendrick lamar because he's definitely the best rapper of our generation he's good at word plays and he's really creative with his music um it's definitely the best rappers of our generation it's always been between kendrick lamar and j cole so next i put ksr k at number nine i put krs1 he's a genius he's he's definitely one of the best rappers to ever touch the mic he's a poet he um always delivers lyrics with meaning and he engages the spirit of his audience. At number eight, I put Big Daddy Kane. Even though he's not released a solo album in almost 20 years, he is definitely another one of the greatest MCs. And he, he raised the bar of excellence in rap. At number seven, I put Ice Cube. You probably know him from a lot of movies. He does a lot of movies now. Um, he was in, some of his best movies are Boys in the Hood and Friday. He's also in a movie I think called Ride Along with Ken, uh, Kevin Hart. Um, he's a great lyricist and he tells a story always in his music. And he's always, uh, he's brutally honest. He keeps it real. His lyrics are a lot of the time political. Sometimes they're considered violent and non-confrontational. -con um, and he has uh, one of the best diss tracks of all time. He was a former member of NWA with Dr. Dre. Easy E, DJ Yella, MC Ren, and Arabian Prince. At number six, I put Rakim. This, I really wanted to put him as number five, but you know, we had to make a sacrifice. So he is very talented at making metaphors. He has amazing flow. He delivers his lyrics so naturally and he's always able to rhyme words in the middle and at the end of his lines. He definitely perfected a uh, flow in the rap game. At number five, I put Eminem. Now, this was really like, I was torn between number five and, and six, but he is so creative with his lyrics. He tells a story as well with his rap. He can rap about almost anything and he has so many deep lyrics and songs where he tells stories about his life and he um, pushes his uh, listeners to move forward and have hope. Um, he has songs about his childhood bully, his mom, his children, his ex-wife, and his fans. My favorite song by him is Lose Yourself. At number four, I put Jay-Z. His voice is so easily distinguishable from other rappers. He is he has like a laid back kind of voice where it sounds it, it, it makes his rap sound effortless. He always makes he, he always keeps his rap skills at a high level throughout his entire career and even now he's able to stay relevant through things other than music and he's one of hip-hop's first billionaires you might also know him for being beyonce's husband um my favorite song by him is dead presidents too at number three i put nos he is a storyteller better than all the other <laughs> storyteller rappers he uses poetic devices that separates him from anyone else and he makes you feel like you're list you're on the scene in his story my favorite song by him is if i ruled the world featuring lauren hill 
I really was torn between number three and two as well. I didn't know who I should put, if I should switch them around, but I think I made the right choice in the end. For number two, I put the Notorious B.I.G. aka Biggie Smalls, aka the King of New York. It's no secret that even Jay-Z was inspired by Biggie. His storytelling rhymes was straight from his experiences in Brooklyn. He, his lyrics never failed to impress. He can make rhyme uh, words that don't even rhyme rhyme together. He, though in his, mur his murder in 1997 broke a lot of hearts, he was still able to release one of his best albums, Life After Death, six days before his passing. My favorite song by him is Living in pa Living Pain featuring Tupac Nas and Mary J. Blige. He, one of his most famous beefs were with Tupac, which is number one on my list. He brought hip hop to a level of rawness and poetic drive that, and he was able to deliver his words so clearly and straightforward. Um, he had self, he had like this self empowerment that made everyone want to listen to what he had to say. But really, what made me put him as the GOAT was um, his interviews, his views on violence, self defense, poetic abuse. It made him, it was better than his music. His music was always real and he kept it, um, he was always uh, well spoken. But honestly, some of his interviews would scare people in power. He, it probably led him to his constant arrest for minor um, issues. He was arrested for things he did not do. He claimed he did not do. He wanted to be more than another um, rapper. He wanted. He said he wanted to inspire change and maybe be this the maybe spark the mind that would change the world. He was shot five times in 1994, but he survived making more music. He has one of the the best diss tracks of all time to which is to Biggie Smalls, and it's called Hit Em Up. He was later killed in 1996, a few months before the Notorious B.I.G. And my favorite song by him is Ghetto Gospel. I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know if you agree with me, but I'm not taking my list back. You can listen to some of the songs and some of the artists. I hope you like them. Thank you for watching. Bye. Hi, my name is Hanin and today I'm going to be showing you my favorite books and where can you find them and about the information about some and the little information about the books. So I'm here with Roald Dahl because he this I chose this book because this is my favorite author of all time. I like Roald Dahl because he makes his story realistic. He makes his story like really funny and he makes it he makes them really yeah, he makes it really like like he doesn't say any inappropriate stuff, he like says it like in an appropriate way. And I like Roald Dahl because he writes his books the right way, not like he's just writing and like, okay, let's just finish this. He writes in a good way and he loves to read his, he loves to read and I do, exact same. So I have Witches, one of my favorite books from him. And this, the tie, this is Witches and mainly it's about how this boy and his his parents died from a car accident, but uh, the boy actually survived. And then he moved with his grandma, and uh, his grandma told him about witches. And now he's now the witches are trying to turn all kids into mice. So this is what the witches are all about. Oh, witches! It's really good to watch. 
See, and it's actually a, it's actually a movie you can see on Netflix. And if you do not want to watch it on Netflix, this is two ways. You can watch it on Netflix, and you can go to the q and website, and you find something called Tumble Reading. And you can maybe search um, this book, Raw Dad the Witches, and you, maybe you can find it. Or you can watch the movie. This is the second book I like. It's called Turn in the Chocolate Factory. So if you adore chocolate and you like factories, this is gonna be the perfect book for you, like the perfect one. So this book is mainly about a boy who wins, like this, these people, Willy Wonka, which is right there. There's actually a movie too. Uh, this is Willy Wonka and he's giving, he had to close away his factories and spies come, a uh, long story. And then afterwards, he gives five golden tickets and a some if they find it in the chocolate bars they get to go to Willy Bonka's factory and I'm not going to spoil it but only five kids are going to be finding it so every chapter will be a chapter that maybe the person's trying to is luck or the person got the chocolate the golden ticket and if you want, don't know where to find these you can, the exact same one for witches you can find the movie on Netflix or you can go to Tumble Reading and Q&L website and you can find you can find this book and both of these books can also be found in many types of libraries if they have it in stock so these are my favorite books and i'm i hope you guys like it and yeah Welcome to Fun Facts. This week in Fun Facts, we're going to talk about countries. The first fact is that the entire world's population could, could fit inside of Los Angeles. The second fact is more people visit France than any other country. The third fact is there are only 43 countries that still have royal families. The fourth fact is the longest place name on the planet is 85 letters long. The fifth fact is Copenhagen is the most bike friendly city in the world. Thank you for joining me for this week's look at fun facts and see you all next week. Hi everyone, I'm Amina and on my segment of Guardi uh, and on my segment of Good Morning ACS I will be showing different gardening tips and um how to grow trees and fruits from seeds and other things like this. Um for today's segment though I will be showing I will be showing how to grow an avocado from seed to tree. Okay, so imagine that you just ate this delicious avocado and you have its seed left. You could throw it out, add it to your composting pot, uh, your composting pile, or whatever else you can do with an avocado. But what if you planted it and made it into your very own little tree? Avocado seeds grow and sprout super fast, so I would say in about a year or two, you will have, um, you will have your own very little avocado tree. If you decide to go, if you decide to go along with this. Um, the first thing you will have to do is get your seed and clear it from any avocado flesh without damaging the skin. This is incredibly important since if you damage the skin or leave any fresh, it is most likely that your seed will, will rot even before it starts to sprout. Um, so after that, you want to attach three toothpicks uh, so it, you can balance it um, straightly on a glass. Then put it on a glass, in a, I mean, put it on top of a glass, and um, um, and then fill it with water. You want the, just the bottom of the avocado to touch the water, and you will probably want to um, you will probably want to top off the water about every couple of days, and then refresh the water every week. Once you notice that your avocado has good roots and a 
and a couple of leaves um, on top of it, you will want to pot it. Now to pot it, what you want to do is get a pot that has drain drainage holes and is about um, um, two inches bigger in diameter than your roots. So this is because avocado roots grow incredibly fast and they will definitely need room once they're in, a so in soil. Um, when planting your avocado, you want to make sure that the, uh, the top of the seed is visible uh, and you have your plant centered in the middle. You will also, you after you're done with it, you also want to water it in very, very well and you want to see the water come out of the bottom so the avocado feels right at home. Some care tips. Um, looking after an avocado is incredibly easy. All we have to do is maintain re regular waterings on a weekly basis and don't ever, ever let the soil dry out. Um, avocados love water, so when watering, water till you see it come out to on the dripping tray. They also love sun, so put it in the brightest spot you have in your home. Um, you should keep your avocados indoors and normal house temperature should be good for them. Um, all you have to do now is just relax and wait till your avocado grows into a beautiful, lovely tree. Um, thank you for listening to me and um, have a lovely weekend and I will see you next week. Welcome to Comic Book Trivia, your gateway to the wonderful world of comics. I'm your host, Samir, and today we'll be talking about comic publishers outside of Marvel and DC, which, and they're considered the big two. Um, first is the Dark, uh, Dark Horse Comics, which has the license to Star Wars comics, Aliens, and, and they also created Hellboy, which has many movie adaptations, and the Umbrella Academy, which has now been adapted to a TV series. We have Image Comics with titles like Wildcat, Spawn, Youngblood, and also Rocket Girl, which I have the um, first volume of it. And uh, it's about a girl who's sent back in time to 2013, but she loses her memory of why she was sent back in time. So it's quite interesting, and I'm looking forward to reading the next issue. Finally, we have IDW Publishing, which owns the comic book rights to Transformers, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Star Trek, and all three of them have had many movies, ad movie adaptations, and TV series, and they help revitalize interest in the comics of them. They also own titles and publish uh, G.I. Joe comics and Terminator comics, which both have movies. Thank you for watching Comic Book Trivia with your host, Amira, and have a great week.